<laughs> it's not even if. It's, it's when I win. Yeah, when I win, this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. Shoot. <sighs> yeah, here we are again, folks. What up? Super duty tough work. We here. Once again, in your face, mm-hmm. in your ears, mm-hmm. visuals, mm-hmm. audio, yep. bullet points and such. Word. Elected by the people as the dopest podcast out there. The most infamous. Highly recommended. The most infamous. Most respected. Mm-hmm. Most illustrious podcast. And we just continue to do this shit. Yeah, man. You know, um, as if we just can't be stopped. We can't. I don't know why people even think that we could. No. Nah. And so, you know, we're going to continue this journey of having these dope conversations and inspiring artists all over the globe. Word. And we appreciate those of you who have tuned in and supported us thus far. Word, word. Especially those of you who spread the word about Super Duty. Yes, yes, you yes. Know, y'all doing the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because we can't be everywhere at the same time. Facts. And so we need y'all to kind of spread the word. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this week we're going to talk about something that we probably should have talked about a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But maybe it just takes time to formulate the idea and kind of get into like how to to approach it. And uh, this week we want to talk about dealing with artistic anxiety. Word. Because, you know, everyone talks about this or talks around this topic. Mm-hmm. They don't really go in, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and there really should not be as much anxiety around your creative work. Right. But it is. Word. A lot of people feel a lot of weird ways and, and, and the anxiety can stop you from being productive. Facts. It can kill your work before you even start. And so this episode, we want to talk about how to deal with artistic anxiety so that you can be more productive. Word. Do more dope shit. You know? Word. And so we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Word. We got you stuck off the realness. The most infamous. You heard of us. Official podcast murderers. The show comes equipped with few points to share. Grown man ideas for all those who care and want to grow. So go ahead and download every single week with a brand new episode. You're not alone in this world, cousin. So we share information and honest discussion and keep repping a culture like we supposed to. They spread gossip, but they never come close to. I can hear it inside their tone. They talk about the industry but never left their home you get laced up with bullet points and such plus empowering topics that they never would touch you can put your whole network against the team but super duty tough works the mvp most valuable podcast on mp3 priceless info but all of it's free so take these words home and think them through super duty tough work is coming at you now listening to Super Duty Tough Work with your host, Blueprint, raw and uncut, adult conversations, no shucking, no jobbing, and no bullshit. Boom. Yeah. Your boys. Yeah. Can't be stopped. Word. Super duty tough work. Anxiety. Yo, before we get started. Go ahead. I got an announcement to make. Oh shit, son. Go ahead, son. What's the announcement? Yo. October 20th. October 20th. What's happening? Autopilot is coming to your eardrums. What's Autopilot, son? Autopilot is my next solo record. Okay. Produced by yours truly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. T-shirts. Okay. Stickers. Okay. Vinyl. Tell them. CDs. What? You know what I'm saying? It's coming. Go inside. It's coming. Ah! <laughs> Speaking of anxiety. Uh, <laughs> you feeling it a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that happens. That happens, man. A little bit. Yeah, because it's uh, all you. Right. Probably a little bit of anxiety. Yeah, you know, had to write that check. Oh, financial anxiety. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gotta get that back. <laughs> But yeah, October 20th, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, October 20th. It's That's coming. dope. So y'all know, y'all know what to do. Come Tuesday, October 20th. Yeah. Support my mans. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, autopilot solo a uh, solo album, solo produced. And I've heard the record naturally. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's fire. So yeah. it's support the man. Word. Music videos are coming. Yeah, they're coming. Of which I will be part of. Yes, sir. At least a couple. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, support my man, you know, because, yeah, anxiety just ain't for the creative shit. Nah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to have marketing anxiety. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Promotional anxiety. Facts. Yeah. Financial. Yeah. Check writing anxiety. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, this week, you know, we're talking about dealing with artistic anxiety. And we're just going to talk about some techniques and things that you should just some some thoughts and, and ways to handle it that we think will help you improve what you do. And so we're going to get into the number one thing. Number one tip for dealing with artistic anxiety is that is to examine your inner dialogue. <laughs> I'm a believer that, you know, whatever happens within mm-hmm. is reflected on how we you know, interface with the world and people around us. And that means that the way you think impacts what you do. Mm-hmm. It impacts how you see the world and how you see the world impacts your actions within the world. So if you are a person who has a negative inner dialogue mm-hmm. where you say to yourself, man, I'll never be good enough. Man, I suck. Then you then you will. You won't right. be good enough. Right. Like how how can you then present your ideas to the public Mm -hmm. with confidence. Mm -hmm. It's hard because your inner dialogue is telling you, I suck, Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve success. These are things we've all said, Mm -hmm. or maybe uh, I'm a fraud. Mm -hmm. If you you achieve success, maybe you second guess it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't deserve this, man. Maybe I cheated. That person should be more famous than me. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things are things that we say to ourselves, by ourselves. And they're bad, but the the beauty of it is that because we control it, mm-hmm. we can change it. Yeah, we have to change our inner dialogue to move from doubt, fear, fear of failure, right, uh, insecurity about whether we're good enough, mm-hmm. and move to a place to where we change our dialogue to be more positive, more encouraging. Because if we don't, the anxiety of failure will cripple us. Yeah, you can relate back to the uh, the Super Duty book list episode. Yeah. Um, a Man Who Thinketh. Yes. Yo, man. You read, you read it, it? Man, come on. <laughs> the the My favorite chapter, and it's super short. It's like 24, 25 pages. Yeah. Super short. My favorite chapter is the one about thought controlling circumstance. Mm. The way that you think affects what's happening around you because you put yourself, your thoughts put, your, put you in position to have certain things happen in your life. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking a certain way, then those are the type of people that you'll surround yourself with. Therefore, you'll have certain circumstances that are birthed out of how you think and how the people around you think. If you change how you think, if you change your inner dialogue, what you tell yourself about your life, about your success, about your relationships, about whatever, then that's what you'll reap. Yes. Like, I don't understand how people don't understand the connection with how you think about your life and how your life actually is. Like take an examination of how your life is and then take an examination of how you think about your life. Mm-hmm. And you'll see those parallels. Once you change that, then everything around you will change. Yep, I agree, I agree. Another example I'd like to give is like, when I made my movie three years ago, I never directed a movie. Mm-hmm. I had done a couple music videos, but no one expected me to make a movie. Right. You know what I'm saying? One of the first things I did was I wrote a little note to myself, and I think we talked about this past, and it said, you are a movie director until further notice. Mm -hmm. That was it. I put on a little sticky tab, and it was on my desk. So every day I came in there, I told myself, you're mute. You're a movie director. Mm -hmm. You make movies. And and even though I never, because I knew the issue was not whether I could technically learn those things or I had the time to make the movie. The issue was, whether I believed in myself enough internally to go through the work and the process to create a film. Having the confidence to execute. Right. Yeah. And if your inner dialogue contradicts what you want to do, yeah. you will never get there and you will be crippled by this anxiety of fear, negativity and, and self doubt, which is why most artists never get the shit off the ground. Facts. You know, so that's number one. Number two way of dealing with artistic anxiety is to be childlike. No fear. (laughs) It's just, you know. No fear at all. We know when you watch a kid playing, Mm -hmm. do they look like they're crippled by anxiety? Nah. Do they look like they care what people think? They're going all in. (laughs) They are in their own world (laughs) creating dialogue, Mm -hmm. scenarios, 
having fun, smiling. They're not doing it for you. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it for their friends. They're doing it for themselves. No one is lives life more in the moment than children. Facts. Young children are not crippled by the past. Mm -hmm. They're so young they can't remember last week. Right. They're not tripping on the future. They don't even know what the future really is. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. They're like, can I play right now? Yep. That is what's being what what being childlike is. Mm -hmm. When you see them at their peak, they are having fun and creating and enjoying it. And, but as we get older, mm -hmm. we start to lose that ability because life happens. You know what I'm saying? You start having responsibilities. Yeah. You have a family. You kind of lose that fear because you feel like you have too much to lose to be childlike. Yeah. Now you have to think like an adult. You have to do adulting, as they say these days. Yeah. And sometimes, especially in your careers, you know, whether it's music, wh whatever kind of art you do, whatever, whatever you do. You have to sometimes approach things without fear. You got to approach things like, I'm going to get this done whether you like it or not. Yeah. You know, sometimes whether you want to or not. Yeah. You got to get some shit done. Kids don't give a fuck. They Kids don't, don't care. <laughs> they like, this is what I'm doing and I'm going to do it until further notice. Right. Until somebody stops me. <laughs> right. Until somebody stop me, I'm going in. Hey, go to bed, son. Go to bed. Hey, we got to go here. Yep. Go take a bath. Go take a shower. Yep. Go do your homework. That's when kids stop playing. Mm-hmm. We got to be the same way, man. Yeah. Like that shit is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, when we start approaching our art as adults, as we did our play as children, mm -hmm. the results are going to be incredible. Facts. Like imagine going into your studio and only caring about having the most fun, doing the most and taking that idea as far as possible. Yeah. Not caring about uh, anything going on around you, not caring about who's watching you. That is how you don't have anxiety. Yes. The anxiety is because we're so worried about the adult things mm -hmm. when we're trying to do something that requires our creativity yeah. and our childlike energy that we can't be childlike. Yeah. We're crippled and paralyzed by the adult responsibilities to where we can't even play no more. And I think social media plays a part in this, too. Yes. Because we're so worried about who's going to like my post. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who's paying attention to what I'm doing? If I put this up, is it going to is it going to, you know, create a buzz or yeah. is it instead of just doing it just because you love it? Yeah. Instead of doing it cuz I want to share something with you. Thank you. I don't give a fuck if you like it or not. Thank this you. is me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think unfortunately that's starting to cripple our children too. Oh yes. You know what I'm saying? Because they're they're so used to caring about what their friends think and how many people like their pictures on Instagram yeah. and this and that that they lose that fearlessness. Mm -hmm. They lose that going out on a limb just for the, you know, just for the fun of it. They starting to lose that and you know, it it sucks. Yeah, and it's our fucking fault. Yeah. It's our fucking fault. You know, if the kids lose it, then no one is going to have it. Nah, it's going to be a whole bunch of rigid motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. with, with no fun. And we can't, we, we got to always remind ourselves that this is art. This is not math. Mm -hmm. This is not science. Right. Yeah, you got to know some technical shit to be able to make beats, mm -hmm. count bars, you know, right. just a little bit of music to be able to make music if you're a musician. But no matter what your art form is, remember, it's art at the end of the day. It's not just I do this thing, I automatically get this. No, you need some kind of journey. Mm -hmm. You need some kind of just like the freedom to just have fun and get in there and do whatever. No rules and, and be free. That's when you get the best results. And the fact that it's art is supposed to be fun. Yeah. It ain't supposed to be hard, Come stringent on. work. It's not. It's supposed to be fun. Right. Like it only should be stringent. It especially this should especially apply to those who are not professionals. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, art is my job. Mm -hmm. I would be completely justified in having a little bit more anxiety right. than someone else. Mm -hmm. But I still try to make sure that when I'm in my studio, mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about nothing but music yeah. because I understand that that taints the art. So if you don't even do music full time or art full time, you better really be childlike right. because you shouldn't be worried about whether you can pay your bills off art. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whether whether you're going to get a good review, just make art right. that you're happy about that you ultimately will be happy about someone else hearing seeing you know what I'm saying experiencing you can't sit there worried about oh someone's watching me play I look goofy when I do this thing man this thing ain't you know what I mean do it yeah. have fun be childlike yeah it's number two
Uh, let me see. Uh, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Cool. What up, everybody? Blueprint here to let you guys know that all three of my books are finally back in stock. That means right here, What a Night. This book is back in stock. It's $10. This is a book about the worst shows in my career. That's 10 Word is Blog Volume 1 is back in stock. That's $10. And also, The Making of Adventures in Counterculture. This book is about my Adventures in Counterculture album. If you have the album, you love the album, you should have a book too. That's $10. All three of these books are back in stock uh, for $10 each. Or you can get all three of them for just $25 right now on waitlist.net. That's all I got today. Uh, thanks for your support. Peace. Okay. Super Duty. Tough work. Yeah. Back again. Dealing with artistic anxiety. Yeah. Helping you work through this stuff, y'all. Mm-hmm. And uh hit us in the comments, you know, if you're feeling any of this stuff. If you're feeling these uh these, these 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 tips. We got two down. We're on number three way of dealing with artistic anxiety. And this is to be process oriented, not results oriented. Mm-hmm. When you're process oriented, you fall in love with just making art. Mm -hmm. After all, that's what you're doing, right? Right. The problem has become when you're re when you become results oriented, you change your inner dialogue to, I have to make art that people like. Right. I have to make art that sells. Mm -hmm. I have to make art that sells enough to pay my bills. Mm -hmm. I have to make art that's easily marketed mm -hmm. or marketable so that more people know it and can buy it and I make money and I don't have to go to this job that I hate and then I don't have to get evicted. And you see how we start adding more yep. and more things to it that are based on results. Right. That's nothing to do with the process. The process should be the process. Mm -hmm. That's it. You make art. Who, who gives a fuck? Make the shit. The results come after that and you should never increase the scope to where you're like i gotta write a hit record mm -hmm. i gotta sell more than my last shit i gotta do this i gotta be better than them i gotta get this place to review it i gotta get signed by them i gotta take this record and go on the road if i don't tour and i ain't making this much money off this shit it's a fucking failure mm -hmm. that just creates anxiety yeah. it creates a situation where you have all these expectations before you even sit down to create and it paralyzes you. Yeah, it puts you in a position where it's not it's not fun. No. You can't have any fun because you're too worried about the end result instead of the process. When you start to understand the process, you start to love the process. Yes. You get excited about making that drum pattern. You get excited about listening to records and finding that sample for that beat. Yes. You know, you get excited about those things. The end result will come. Yeah. If you put your heart into the process, the end result will come. And usually... When you love what you do and you find the purpose in what you do, success is usually around the corner. I agree. But it's it's unfortunate that people think so far ahead mm -hmm. that they don't trust the process. Right. You got to trust that that process is going to be successful. Yes. But not if you half step it. Mm -hmm. Not if you create an agenda around a process that compromises the art. Right. Don't do that. Change whatever your inner dialogue is. Change it to where. All you're concerned about is making art. Mm -hmm. That's it. When it's time to create, when you sit down, fuck everything else. Fuck whether somebody like it. Just make dope shit. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Or or just even say, I'm gonna make something. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be I'm gonna make dope shit. Yeah. I'm going to make a beat. I'm gonna sit down and make something today. That's it. That's it. You won. Mm -hmm. No anxiety. Yeah. Because if you sit down, you're successful. Right. The failure is just not sitting down every day. <laughs> right. You should have more anxiety about not working on your art than you should about working on your art but not making something great. Right. The results will come. Exactly. But if you sit down, that's success. Yes. You know? That's number three. All right. Number four, way of dealing with artistic anxiety. And this is how you deal with the past, the future, and the present. And what I mean by this is that when you are obsessed about the past, that leads to depression, mm -hmm. right? That's the person who's always looking in the rear view mirror, like, yep. man, what's going on back there? Mm -hmm. I wish I could change that. 
You know, this thing happened and I'm fucked up over it. You know, you're worried about that. You're so worried. What the fuck do I do? You know, uh, I can't change this, but this happened, that happened, and I'm worked up and I don't want that to happen again. That's anxiety. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the people who are obsessed with the future. Yeah. They can't control that. What if this don't work? What if uh, that don't work? Yeah, the what ifs. Yeah. Man, if only, man, I hope that this, man, this better happen. If this doesn't, then you're obsessed. Being obsessed with the future is just as bad as being obsessed with the past. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the Stevie Wonder uh, Pastime Paradise song. Yeah. Spending all their life living in a pastime paradise. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's ex exactly, these are the things that cause anxiety, you know? But the key is to just be in a present. Yeah. It's a present. What yeah. can I control right now? Right, right. If, you, if you're a driver, make sure you just, you know what's going on around you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, just, hey, I know what's going on. <laughs> right. Somebody got an accident behind me, so what? I ain't tripping on what's going on three miles ahead, four miles ahead. Worried about things I can't see. Worry about what's in your control, mm -hmm. which is the present. And the truth is that whether you like it or not, you can't change the past, mm -hmm. can't control the future. Then that was all you got. That's all you got. And that's all you can control. You can make a decision on what you're going to do right now. You can't make a decision right now about what you're going to do in three years. <laughs> right. You can have goals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with having goals, yeah. but all you can actually control in the next two minutes what decision am I going to make? Yeah. What am I going to eat for dinner? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. Like, that's the kind of shit you can control. Am I going to yeah. go down here and work on my art today? Yeah. That's what you can control. That's it. That's it. That's only an hour or two out. Yeah. Okay, it's four o'clock. What am I doing at five? Right. Let me take my butt down here and try to make a beat. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's it. Yeah, you can't control what you're going to do next year at this time. Mm -hmm. Next year at this time, I'm going to work on beats at five o'clock every day. Life happens. Yeah. You can't control it. But the, the thought... I don't know if it's an arrogant thought. I don't know if it's a naive thought, but there's some sort of thought that we often have that we have more control than we actually do. Oh, yeah, of course. That we can somehow go back and change the past and, and make up for things we haven't done or things that haven't gone our way or that we can somehow control the future mm -hmm. that we haven't even seen that's so far ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, the most you can do is control the now. And in the now, you prepare for the future. Right. That's what the now is for. The now is not the now for, I'm just going to say, fuck the future. Mm -hmm. That's not it. The, being obsessed with the now is to say, okay, well, now this is all I can control. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing now, I'm going to try to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to commit to working on my art, my craft. And then after that, you know, everything I do will prepare me for the future. Right. And the future is not necessarily a thousand you know saying days away this shit could be tomorrow tomorrow is the future yeah you work on your craft today you you prepared yourself for tomorrow right it doesn't have to be well 10 years from now what the fuck's gonna happen what's the point mm -hmm. if i can't if i'm not the man now why go through all this shit because mm -hmm. i can't control the no man you got right now yeah the future is tomorrow mm -hmm. future is next friday fucking prepare yeah. by doing it now facts that's number four okay number five way to deal with artistic anxiety is to journal about your art. Yeah, it's the best way to get it out. Come on, man. See, we have the advantage of being rappers. Mm -hmm. So naturally, we get to write. Yeah, we write about shit. Yeah. yeah. But this should apply to everybody, whether you're a visual artist, mm -hmm. a producer, um, you know, people can blog. Mm -hmm. Like like Black Cable was talking about how he started out early in his career, just blogging a lot, right? He was a producer, mm -hmm. but it helped him create his voice and, and his platform. I think all artists, no matter what you do, you should feel like journaling about your art mm -hmm. because in doing so, you get to work through your problems. Right. There are not many people who are going to understand what you're going through. Right. Right. Like, but, but when you start writing about it, I found some journals I had way back in the day. I don't know where they're at now, but when we first started doing shows in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. I would write every week or something about what we had going on. Like, mm -hmm. and I remember looking back like, damn, I was lighting such and such promoter's ass up. Like I was <laughs> this motherfucker, this <laughs> goopy shit that I didn't appreciate, you yeah, know, but yeah. we, we powered through it and we had a dope set. And I was just writing about what we were doing at that time. And uh, I was like, that's kind of fresh because clearly I needed to, to talk to somebody yeah, about to get this it shit. out. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it helped me work through it because there were times I would sit down and write and I might have been bent out of shape because maybe we didn't have a great show or mm -hmm. maybe we didn't make that much money or maybe something didn't go our way. But then when I look back at it a year from now, it's like, oh, that wasn't even a big deal. Right. I'm glad I wrote about that because it let me see like how far we've come. Um, 
And it helped me work through the shit at the time to not be so anxious or upset about it or even carry those feelings into the future. Mm -hmm. I think every artist needs that. Like art is some shit where it's hard to quantify success. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to you have to have something that that you can use as benchmark. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your story through writing about it. Write about your stuff every week. This is what I did this week. This is what I set out to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do more if you want to. It ain't got to be long paragraph two paragraphs page mm -hmm. but catalog and, and and tell your story you know what i'm saying chronicle your story of your art and your journey and in doing so you will relieve the anxiety mm -hmm. about all these questions that you can't answer anyway yeah when i was when i used to write regularly just journaling sometimes i didn't really understand my feelings until i wrote about them yep you know sometimes i i had this inner voice you know, saying all this stuff and fighting with all, and I didn't, I wasn't able to organize my thoughts until I actually put them down on paper and read them back. Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's yes. why this is going this way because I'm feeling this. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, if you write regularly, then you'll just pour out stuff will just pour out of you. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll go back like, oh, and start to understand certain things and be able to pinpoint mm -hmm. certain things. And, you know, it definitely helps. Yeah, man. So so don't be afraid to write about your art, man. And if the more anxious you feel, mm -hmm. the more you should be writing. The more you need to write. Yeah, because it just means you have unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. And that's OK. You don't have all the answers, but just just write. Yeah. And uh, we'll take a break. What's up, everybody? Here to let y'all know, we got a brand new seven inch available on the waitlist.net web store right now. The name of the record is Let Us Pray and it's by the Thermites out of Reno, Nevada, featuring myself, Blueprint on a Rhyme. As you can see, we're dealing with some beautiful clear vinyl right here. The A side of the record is the vocal version. The B side of the record is the instrumental version. And just so you know, there's only 500 copies of this record and I've only been given 50 to sell total that means that if you want one of these records you better act fast this is the let us pray seven inch available exclusively at waitlist.net get yours before they run out Peace. To us, but to them, it's really small i guess we still need faith like biggie smalls enjoy the quiet and meditate silence the mind thinking of a better day let go of yesterday give thanks to the sun for another day let us pray All right, folks. Yeah. Last joints. Mm hmm. Dealing with artistic anxiety. This one's super important. Yeah. So number six thing we're going to tell you is to focus on inspiration and not competition. Yes. That means that a lot of the reasons we feel anxiety in our art is because we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. Yeah. This guy got that. That guy made this much money. This guy was on that tour. Mm -hmm. This girl did that. I ain't even done that yet. Why don't I have what they have? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm just as dope as them. That's when we really yep, start yep, taking it there. Yep. They're not better than me. You see how how quickly it goes from comparison mm -hmm. to like this competition. Yes. Right? So it's like, oh man, I'm comparing myself. But they not, I got more bars. <laughs> I'm more John Blaze. Yeah. They shit I right. <laughs> My shit more John Blaze in there. Yeah. Why am I not more successful than them? And then we take it a step further when we when we vocalize this this competition to our friends, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. fans. Yeah. Because they just throw fuel on the fire. They throwing bricks on them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me throw this fucking log on that fire. They ain't, they ain't as nice as you, son. <laughs> right, man. They ain't shit. Right. Fuck them. You supposed to been blown up. Mm -hmm. You over here still working a job. Mm -hmm. These whack motherfuckers. And you start, then you go to your job. Now yep. you tight at my work site. Like, yep. oh, I'm here with y'all. I'm better than all these rappers. I don't want to be here. All because you took the path of competition. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Be a comparison instead of inspiration. Yeah. Like we got to, when you start getting into this competitive thing, it causes you so much anxiety Yes, because you never can really compete with people because you're not the same as yeah, them. Yeah, you're different. It's not fair. You're different. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to them to compare yourself apples to apples with somebody. Right. Have they been rhyming as long as you? Mm -hmm. Do they have the support system? Are they the same system as you? Same city as you? Same scene as you? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do they know what you know? Do you know what they know? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're not equal just because we both can rhyme. Mm -hmm. Like it's not the same. It's not the same. We have different paths. Are we even doing the same style? Right. 
are you even in my lane? Like, what are we comparing each other for? What, who are you comparing yourself to? It's not fair to you. It's not fair to them. And it just creates anxiety. But what I think it should be is inspiration. Yes. Everybody who's successful or more successful than you can be a source of inspiration. Yeah. And that's way more beneficial than just trying to compete with them and getting mad at them. <laughs> yeah, man. Like when I started uh, streaming. Yeah. I did not. I was not thinking like I got to be better. Yeah. Than these people. Like I was looking at who who is the dudes that's doing this shit and doing it right. Yeah. OK. I'm going to use what I learned from them and create my own thing. I never saw it as, oh, I got to get better. Yeah. I got to get better than them. I got to get more views than them. Yeah. I got it. Nah, it's like, OK, I'm going to use that as an inspiration to get where I want to go. I want to do this thing. But let me find my own little niche. Let me find what I'm good at. Let me find the things that my fans want to hear. Yeah. The things my fans want to experience when I'm on here live. But I'm a, I'm a continue to watch these cats that's doing it. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? To see like, oh, okay, let me get my quality up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Let me make sure my sound is right. Let me make sure my, you know, atmosphere is looking tight. Let me get my lighting up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like all that kind of stuff. That's inspiration. It's not about me trying to be better yeah. than this cat or be better than that cat or get more views. It's mm -hmm. like, Nah, I'm going to use that to fuel my fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To make sure I get where I want to go. Yeah. And, and then to add on to that, one of the one of the worst things about the comp the competitive things that people do is that it takes you out of the position to get help. Yes. Right. Like when you approach it like, hey, you inspire me. Mm -hmm. You take it. You take the, the, the philosophy or the mindset of a student, mm -hmm. whereas. A student is going to approach somebody and say, man, how'd you do that? Yeah, exactly. You're going to try to find where they are learning from. Mm -hmm. Man, what inspires you to do that? Yeah. Let me let me go to the source. This person can be a great resource to me. Whereas the person who sees a competition, they're never able to accept information that actually will make them better. They won't grow. No, nah, they can't grow because they're so closed off. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, you're, you're so closed off and angry at this person that you can't learn the lessons from their success, mm -hmm. because as I say, success leaves clues. You can't look at a successful motherfucker, and then like in your streaming example, if you watch the people who are your top guys long enough, mm -hmm. they'll tell you what they use. Yep. I'm using this camera, yep. I'm using this software, yep. I'm using this package, yep. I'm using this lens, I'm going using this, right? Now, if you're busy competing with them, mm -hmm. you're not going to stick around long enough <laughs> yeah, to learn that. To learn that. Yeah. You're going to be guessing, you're going to think they're cheating, mm -hmm. and it's not fair to you, it's not fair to them. Use them as inspiration, man, because that's when you can truly get better. And if you won't have so much anger and anxiety about your position, I'm not like them. Mm -hmm. I should have what they're doing. I should be doing their numbers. Nah, you should just be doing what's best for you and your fan base. Yeah. And if you allow them to inspire you, you get their way faster. Exactly. You know, so that's number six. All right. Number seven. Mm -hmm. Last joint. Very important. Yes. Number seven way of dealing with artistic anxiety it's to celebrate your progress. Yes. This is something that I forget sometimes mm -hmm. and it kicks my ass. Mm -hmm. I have times where like I'll sit there and I remember getting bummed out. I can't remember if I talked about it on a show before, but like I would be looking at like my online numbers for maybe sales or something like, damn, I ain't shit. You mm -hmm. know, because maybe I had a month and I'm just like, man, yeah. I should be doing more. I should be making, you know, I should be making this. So I should be, and I have these ideas in my head that I'm failing. Mm -hmm. Probably because I saw somebody else do some crazy numbers. <laughs> right, right. And I don't want to admit that I'm, I'm lightweight hating. Them. Right, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. I'm looking at myself feeling insecure. Like, damn, <laughs> he eating over there. Right. I'm not eating like that, you right. know. But then I remember feeling that way for a couple of weeks. And I was like, man, let me go back and just look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and I got the reporting thing. And I went back and looked at all numbers. I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing better than I ever had. Yeah, I'm improving. Yeah. I'm improving. There's progress here. You're right. Yeah. But had that not been documented, mm -hmm. I would still feel like a failure. Yeah. Which is the, the lesson of that is like, if you're not documenting and celebrating your progress, mm -hmm you are probably not really in a position to know how well you're doing. Yeah. And if you're not, then you're going to have anxiety. You're mm -hmm. going to think you're failing when you're not. Yeah. You're going to forget the goals you set. Like, oh, I only set a goal to make that much. Mm -hmm. I only set a goal to reach this many people yeah. or to, meet, or to do that this regularly. Or my goal was just to stream, you know, once, twice a month. Mm -hmm. But instead, when you don't keep track of it, you forget. Then you look back like, oh, man, I ain't shit. But wait a minute. Look at the numbers. Yeah. If you celebrate, then you know you're keeping track of it. 
And you know, man, I'm growing. Yeah. I'm getting better. Look at my first stream versus this one. Man, I came a long way. Yeah. Three, four, five months. That's really good. Yeah. I got a long way to go, but I'm getting better. And I and I don't have to beat myself up about not having what they have because I know that I'm progressing properly, you know. And there's something to add on to this. Allow the people that are supporting you to celebrate with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like something that we talked about and I had to deal with with my wife. You know, we had we got the um the the thing with the podcast um network on yeah you know, and i didn't tell my wife about it yeah and when i told her about it you know later it was kind of in passing in conversation she like hold up like <laughs> you making these moves and you're not allowing me to, you know to be happy for you yeah you know what i'm saying you're not allowed because the people that are around you and the people that love you are invested in your success as well yes so not only should you celebrate your progress but allow the people that are invested in you to celebrate along with you don't keep that shit to yourself i agree and, and another thing too they'll keep you motivated yes too. yes and i'm gonna add on to that because a lot of artists will start feeling weird about celebrating their success publicly yes because they're so afraid of alienating other artists mm -hmm. not their fans mm -hmm. your fans and your family they want you to tell them when you did some good shit right man why would you tell us why would you post about it why would you say it but we sitting there like man you know these other artists man they struggling them, they, they starving over there they're not eating like me <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to make them feel some type yeah. of way and you know all of us got artist friends who are haters yeah yeah and so we know some of them be feeling kind of insecure about some shit like that but the thing is you can't not shine just because another motherfucker can't handle it. Mm -hmm. What's that look like? You turning, you dimming your light because another motherfucker can't handle it. Hopefully you'll inspire them to make moves. Thank you. So here you are downplaying all your successes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Holding back for fear of alienating some insecure motherfucker because of his anxiety right. about you doing well. Yeah. Now you got anxiety about sharing it. Mm -hmm. Just share your shit yeah. because it'll make you feel better. Validated about how far you've come, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that's it. That's it. Seven joints. This is a short episode this week. But mm. hey, I'm not mad about it. Nah. A lot of bars. So we talk about dealing with anxiety, artistic anxiety. And uh, I'm going to read them back. Number one was examine your inner dialogue. Number two was to be childlike. Number three was to be process oriented, not results oriented. Number four was to deal with the past, the future and the present properly. Number five is to journal about your art. Number six inspiration not competition and number seven was to celebrate your progress word and let others celebrate it with you facts and that's it for this week yeah see y'all next week peace peace thank you for listening to super duty tough work subscribe to the podcast on itunes follow the podcast on soundcloud Shoot, I got styles already that's more complex that nobody know about. I mean, super duty tough work. <laughs>